Hey everyone, this is Blanche SB. Welcome back to another Serpents 3 introductory tutorial. And today we're going to be covering properties. And we're just going to be uh, covering the Blender properties for now. We'll get into Serpent properties in another video. But properties are found all over Blender as well. And as you open up your menus, you'll have options here to click and toggle things on and off. You can scale things, slide them up and down. You can enter values in on items and in your modifiers and so on and so forth. Properties exist everywhere in Blender. They're tied to the scene, um, they're tied to the view, they're tied to individual objects, like location has a unique property per object, scale and rotation are all unique per object, and if you're going to be making add-ons in Blender you want to get really used to working with properties. And Serpents 3 has a new way of working with them compared to Serpents 2. We used to have to go get data off of our objects, and uh, we had to build these long node trees that went from left to right in order to find the data that we wanted. Well, in Serpents 3, we have a new type of way of getting that information, and it's via the Blend Data Browser. So currently, I have a panel that I built, and I've got the show wireframes that we have here in our viewport overlays. You turn on the wireframe on and off. I can do that here as well. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and get that property. And once you have the property that you want to grab information from, if you want to show it on your display, all you need is a display property node. And that's found in the Add menu. So Shift A, Interface, and Display Property. Okay. Now I've already chosen an icon, and I've set up a label just to have things look nice. And they're set up on a row. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and dive right in. I've got this workspace set really wide because you can turn the workspace into the preferences and as soon as you click on blend data in the header your preferences is going to change. If you need to go back you can just click on exit and it'll go back. But this is the blend data browser and this is new with Serpents 3. This is how we go and browse through our blend data. And the source is really important. We have an app source and this has everything to do with the blender app itself. So the blender version, the binary path, things that are unique to Blender. Typically, you're probably not going to go here. This is probably for a more advanced use case. We have context, and context deals with things like your active object or your active material, your active image, the, the workspace that you're working in, and the screen and the area that you're in. These are all context-specific. So when I move my mouse over here, I'm in the context of the node editor. Over here, I'm in the context of the 3D viewport, and here I'm in the context of the Blender preferences. So we're going to be grabbing cop properties from the 3D viewport context. And if, if you need to set your context, sometimes it may not be set for the area that you want. So if I wanted something from the node editor, all I have to do is come and right click on a property or a button and do copy context. And now this context area here changes. The data section for source deals with data that lives in my blend file. So I have these objects here. If I scroll down, this is all alphabetical. I can actually do a global filter and I can search for objects. If I open that up, you'll notice it has all the objects in my scene. And if this isn't up to date, you can always refresh and get the new properties on those objects. So this is how you would navigate down through your blend data. All the collections that exist on an object. So I have here this mesh object. I can come and look at the modifiers if there are any on it. And keep drilling down until I find individual properties that I want. So if you don't, don't worry about collections or property pointers, you can scroll down and you actually see individual properties. And one of the common properties of an object would be something like its location. You could continue scrolling until you find the location. And they're sorted by data type. We talked about data in one of the other intro videos. But let's say I didn't want to have to scroll down to find location. Well, your Blend Data Browser lets you filter even further. This is a global filter, and there's only filters on things that are currently shown in, like, the parent hierarchy. But you can do another filter. So I could come in here and do Mesh. And it would filter just only show mess object. And then on the mesh object, I could filter in and enter location. And notice how I've got location available now. 
uh, I could also search based upon type. So if I know I needed a float vector, I could click on this. It would tell me all the float vectors that are available for me to grab. If you want to revert your search back to unfiltered, you just click on this back arrow here. Let's go ahead and we're going to go back to context and I want to get the 3D viewport context. I'm just going to right click and copy context for my 3D viewport. I'm going to clear my filter here and we need to be grabbing from the area. So this is the area that we're working in. This is the active area. So open that up. And then we want to go into spaces. And active 3D view. And inside of here, we're worried about the 3D viewport overlay settings. Okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and search and filter. And I know this is a Boolean, so I can actually click on the Boolean. And should be a wireframe somewhere down here. Show wireframes. But I could fil filter it further. Do a partial entry of my word. There we are, show wireframes. When I click it, you'll notice it has a copied. Don't use Control V to paste this. There's a special shortcut in Serpens, and it's Shift V. That will paste in your property node. Now you can also enter it in manually by going to the Add menu. And under your properties, there is a Blender property node. And it wants you to paste in a property that's been copied from somewhere. And so you can copy them here, or you can right click. And some of them allow you to copy them from other menus. Now, some menus like these are floating menus. They may have weird uh, text that Serpents can't get the information from. So it's going to tell you, hey, I can't copy that. Get it from the Blend Data Browser. So that's why I did this already, because I knew I couldn't copy that. But other properties you can copy, like I could copy on this object. If I go to the object location, I could get that property and then paste it in. Okay. Now, when I've pasted this in for show wireframes, you need to be aware of the input sockets. It's looking for some area, and we're looking at index zero currently. And we have some space that's index zero. I don't want to be referencing a specific area because I'm in a very special layout here. And this area may be number four on this layout, but when I go to another workspace layout, this may be area number one. So I don't want to index. I can change my node here on the drop down menu and pick uh, the enum property. And now I'm looking at. A property from an area and the devs of serpents have done a nice job at helping us find the active area so we, if it says in parentheses using the active we're good to go we don't need to do anything else and spaces will be okay for zero because when we're in this area um, we don't need to worry about the space for this property once i have that set up you notice that now i've got matching what i have up here and you just plug that into your display property node And now you can show and hide wireframes from within your panel. We'll cover Serpent's properties in another video, but I hope you enjoyed this video and it having fun with your Blend Data Browser. Uh, one final parting comment on the data section. If you come and grab something from the data section, like I'm coming from an object, and I'm going to go to my mesh object, and I'm going to do location again. When I paste this in, just be very aware, I'm pasting it from the specific object here. If I want to grab it from the active object, I could totally do that by switching over to property. You can also fill in a property from something else as well, and it won't do the active anymore once you've connected it. So if you're using a for loop or something, this becomes really handy for you to go and set location for uh, more than one type of object. We'll, we'll cover those things in additional videos, but just be aware, when you're copying from the data section, you are copying from a specific object. When you're copying from context, typically it's going to try to default to active, but you may have to give it a little bit of help, like in the case of the show wireframes. That's it for this video. Catch you guys on the next one.